Hey guys, so um, forgive me, it is late and I am really tired, but we're gonna do this. Um, so let's talk about what we're doing today. Um, we'll edit this, you can get all the things. So you should follow along. So today we are going to go over speciation activity and your TBD is, hold on one second. Um, Holt page 288 through 292, define the terms in yellow mold in your words from the reading write out questions one through six in the on page 292 and answer them. All right, I will make this a hyperlink for you um, to the assignment. So your I can statement is I can describe how speciation happens. And let's spell speciation right. Mm, excellent. All right, so that's what we're doing today. So go ahead and open up your speciation activity from yesterday, Wednesday. And we're going to use this picture in a second, but we'll come back to it. Unsubmit yours, please, so you can correct your own. Okay, so we watched the video and before that we had also taken notes. So we are gonna define species as a group of similar organisms that can interbreed and form fertile offspring. And we're going to define, and that's one point we're going to define speciation as the formation of new species through isolation and natural selection and then reproductive isolation is going to be when two groups of two populations, that's better, of one species are so different that they no longer will breed each other. Oops. All space for that. New species can be formed this way because now they won't breed with each other so they can't also then um, if they can't reproduce together then they're no longer going they're going to keep 
um, moving away from each other in natural selection. So um, let's talk about this a little bit, this reproductive isolation. So reproductive isolation, we looked at some examples in the movie or the different movies about how um, like the birds' songs are different, their plumage is different, they don't recognize each other. Um, there's lots of different ways for that to happen. Um, it might be like in plants, it can be that they um, flower at different times or a lot of times animals are only like reproductive. Like if you've ever had like a dog or a cat, they, you say that that is not spayed or neutered. You say that they go into heat, which means that they're like, that's their, re they're ready to like reproduce. Um, and it's only during a certain time of the year. And that is something that happens, um, if that happens at a different time for different groups, then that can mean that they don't mate with each other anymore. So that can be um, that can be part of it. All right. So now we talk about geographic isolation. Um, we're going to go back and look at the diagrams representing the events of finch migration through the Galapagos Islands. Um, we're going to sequence the diagrams. We're going to put them in order to show the correct order in which of fish, finch migration. And then we're going to look at the statements that describe the events of finch migration and put them in order. So let's go back to our pictures. All right, so here's the deal. I think that this one is number one. I don't think I can write on this, which is a bummer. Um, this one's number one because the finches are just getting there. That makes sense. And then this one's number two because that's their population building up in the first island. And then they go from the first island to the second island. That's number three. So it's going to be three, two. And then this one's going to be four because they're going back and forth. So it's three, two, four. This one's going to be five because it is there. Now they're going from he, this island where they're in a high population to this little island and the big island. And then this one's six where some of them are moving back and forth, but they're really populating those areas. So um, three, two, four, six, one, five. Let's see if I can remember that. I'm going to go with there's a 5% chance of that. But you guys had yours open, so you can hopefully remember it if I do it wrong. Three, two, four, six, one, five. All right, so one, two, three points for these questions up here. We'll make this, if you got one out of order, we'll make this worth six points so you can have partial credit if some of them are in the right order. Okay, so this Originally, there are no finches on the islands. Some finches from the mainland managed to fly across to them. That's clearly the first thing that happens. Some of the finches managed to fly to a second island where the environment was different. Gradually, they adapted to the conditions of the second island. So that's number two. Um... Some managed to fly back to the first island, but reproductive isolation had occurred between them and the existing population. Finches increase in number and under the influence of natural pressure. Oh, let's make this one two, actually. Two, because we should describe what's in, and this is now three. Sorry about that. Um, oh, I can't see because my cat's face is in the way. So some finches managed to fly back to go to other islands where the environment was different. Adaptation occurs. So this last one is going to be number four. This one's going to be five because the process is repeated over and over again. And then if the last, the last one is, some managed to fly back to the first island, but reproductive isolation had occurred between them and the existing population. So two, six, one, three, five, four. Describe speciation of the Galapagos Island finches in terms of geographic isolation. So the 
because birds do not typically fly from one island to another. Each island is a individual had the population. So that's kind of each one has its own population. So let's make that one point something that says like each one, each island ha will have its own population. Um, that's not going to interbreed. These populations will adapt through natural selection to the local environment, which is different from the other islands. Specifically, they're going to talk, we're going to talk a lot in Darwin's finches, you're talking about the food that's in, that is available. So you're going to say something about how they adapt to each individual island through natural selection. And then you're going to say, because they are isolated, geographically, each population can adapt in ways that make them different from each other and sorry, from other populations, the other populations on different islands and the original population. This can lead to speciation. So let's say one more point for this. So that's three points total. All right, now we're looking at the beaks. Oh, table number two has a picture and description of the function of beaks of five of Darwin's finches. Okay, so ground finches have a large, strong crushing beak. Large tree finches have a sharp, a strong sharp beak for grabbing and cutting. Warbler finches have small pointed beaks for probing into cracks. Small ground finches have strong crushing beaks and a cactus finch has long tough beaks for probing. So you are now going to match that with the tool that is like it. So let's start with tweezers. Tweezers have a small pointed beak for probing into cracks like a warbler finch. So we're gonna put an A there. Um, a small nutcracker is going to have a, let's see, strong crushing beak, but not a, a large one. So that's this one, B. Let's make this text smaller so it a little better. Here we go. Um, long nose pliers are long, tough beaks for probing. Let's see down here. A large nutcracker is a large, strong crushing beak. It's a D up here. And metal cutters are strong, sharp beaks for grabbing and cutting. So E. So D, E, A, B, C. One point for each of those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six points. The 
The shape and size of a bird's beak would most likely be affected by what environmental limiting factor? Food, one point. Match the finch with the food that is best adapted to eat. So now we are taking the, oh, now we're taking the numbers, the Roman numerals, and putting them in the right place. So a large ground finch that has a large, strong, crushing beak would probably eat large, hard seeds. So we're going to put a Roman numeral one here. A large tree finch that has strong, sharp beaks for grabbing and cutting will probably eat large insects such as beetles. Two for that. A warbler finch that has a Small pointed beak for probing into cracks is probably going to eat small insects in cracks and crevices. Three, Roman numeral three, which is three eyes. I, I, I. Small ground finches, which are going to have strong crushing beaks, will probably eat small hard seeds. IV. And then a cactus finch would probably eat cactus seeds. No kidding. Um, but a cactus finch that has a long tough beak for probing it would have to be tough because the cactuses you have to get around the rough parts so v which is five so one two three four five points for that describe the role of variations in the adaptation and speciation of island finches so if there are no variations, let's start with that. Let's stop with that. So variations allow a population to adapt to a new environment or an environment mental change because some you guys I'm dying here um, environment because some members of the population are likely to have a Trait that is suited to the environment. And then they can go through natural selection. So, one point for that. Okay. Describe how competition and limited resources aided in the speciation of the Galapagos Island. So, in a new environment, the finches needed to compete for food, which was limited because some finches had traits that made them more suited to finding and getting food, they survived and passed on their genes over finches who were not, well, well let's say, who had no advantageous traits or were like badly adapted. 
So if you had like a small weak beak and you had to eat like small hard seeds, you can't crack them open, you don't get food. But your little friend who has the, um, let's see, where are these guys? Small ground finch. So they have, the small ground finch has a strong crushing beak. They are able to get food and they live longer and make more babies. And now all of the finches have great strong little beaks. So one point for that. Okay, and essentially the last paragraph is just supposed to combine all these things. So you're going to talk about how there is a variation. And because of the variation, there are finches that have better traits than others. And through natural selection, competition for limited resources, those finches are going to over, are going to have more offspring. Um, and some of those offspring will survive, that differential survival, and some of them will not. Um, and the ones that do or will pass on those favorable traits to their offspring. So hopefully you have those buzz terms for five points. And I'll skim those for you. But it looks like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 plus 6 is 18 plus 18 plus 3 is oh my goodness, cat. 18 sorry that was some cat problems 18 19 22 and 1 21 plus 6 is 27 28 29 30 30 total points great so you are going to write your score, so 30 minus the number wrong, equals your score over 30. All right, resubmit that, and that will be there for you. And then work on the homework assignment for the remainder of the period. Please stay in the Zoom until you are dismissed by the sub. All right, you guys have a great weekend. Period one, I will see you on Monday and period two I might also see you on Monday or period seven I might also see you on Monday um, it depends on how things go um, period seven less likely all right you guys um, I look forward to seeing you and have a great weekend bye